Hello, everyone, first one. Welcome to your final TV live lesson with me, Mr. Pinkoff. And I am here today to show you guys some activities that you need to be doing to get ready for your next academic year. Now, you've still got next week to come to school and the last couple of days after that. But what I'm going to show you today in this lesson is a few different skills that you can do at home during the summer break or wherever you are going on holiday to improve your hand-eye coordination, your physical skills, how you can move a little bit better, how you can become stronger and healthier. And hopefully, if you do these skills, when you come back to your lesson next year with me, you will be ready to complete all the activities that I've got planned for if you're coming back from year two, or if you're going from year two to year three, you're making a big jump, because now you're going from Marlboro's one up to Marlboro's two. So... These are going to be some activities that you can do to help with your skills for next year. So all you need today is a ball, and I'm going to show you something that's not. All you need is one speaker. Right, just like two. Right, all right. So, one t-shirt, one ball. That's all you'll need for today. So, what I'm going to show you now is a little warm-up that you can do every day that is going to get your body activated. Activated means that it's going to switch the muscles on. Imagine that when you wake up in the morning... Oh, you need to turn your muscles all on. Imagine when your eyes wake up, that's you waking up for the day, you're ready for you to get ready to go and do whatever you need to do. However, you need to start sending the signals from your brain to your body. So what we need to do is get into a routine of exercise that you can do to get your body ready for movement. So, we're going to start off with a little warm-up stretching routine that you can do at home. So, first one, and a very important muscle that we need to focus on, are our hamstrings. Our hamstrings need to stretch, and as they stretch and as we grow, we need to keep stretching them. Otherwise, they're going to get sore, and you're going to get very sore, especially since you're growing now. So... Let's start by stretching and we're going to bring the feet together. And then all you're going to do every day is reach down and try and touch the toe for 10 seconds. Good job. And stand up. And then you're going to bring your legs a little bit further apart. And your second stretch of the day each day is you're going to come down and touch the ground. And again, it's a little bit of a stretch all the way back to our legs. <coughs> and stand back up. Good job. All right. So, feet together, feet apart. That's all we're going to do for our everyday stretch routine. Next, we're going to do some body rotations. So, feet shoulder width apart. I'm just going to rotate the body slowly around. Slowly. Now, this is just going to wake our body up. It's going to get the muscles contracting, squeezing, and loosening. And that happens because you're doing movements that make it work and then let it relax. And make it work and make it relax. 
And that means that blood has to go to those areas. So you can keep your hands on your hips and slowly do big circles. You're going to aim for 10 circles one way and 10 circles the other way. Round, round. Keep it going. We got someone here. Okay, so big circles. Round, round. Getting yourself ready for those movements for the day. Excellent. All right. Our next movement is again still with our legs. We're going to be doing leg swings. Leg swings are a very key part of our movement pattern because we need to use our legs in everyday life. So you can use something to hold on to. And all you're going to do is swing your leg back and forwards. And this is going to get our muscles in our legs moving. It's going to get them nice and long. And it's going to help us with our backs. And it's also going to help us get blood flow. Which means we're going to get the blood flowing around our body a little bit better. Especially when we do lots of different types of movement like this. It means that our muscles won't get sore all the time. Because the more we move, the more blood gets moved around our body. Excellent. All right, very simple, okay? So, we have those exercises. Now we're going to come up to the top of our body. We're going to have our arms. So, we're going to go with one arm underneath, pull it in tight to our body, look over my shoulder to get that arm stretched. Now, especially if you've been sat down at the desk all day, all morning, these are very good stretches to help you utilize those muscles that have been working hard and stretching out any aches and pains. Good job. And finally, your final daily stretching routine to get yourself nice and healthy, is our necks. You might have slept on a little bit funny, it might be sore, or you might have been looking at a screen all day at school. So you need to stretch your necks to get yourself feeling very correct. And change direction. Excellent. Right. So, guys, half those one. That is your daily routine of stretching to get yourself ready for the day. So, feet together, time touch for 10 seconds. Feet apart, 10 seconds touch the ground. Number three is swinging, 10 swings each day. Number four, leg swings, swinging those legs back and forward, both sides, 10 each leg. Our arms, pulling our arm in front of our body for 10 seconds, both sides, and 10 neck rolls. One this way, one the other way. So, very simple, but if you do those movements every day over the summer holidays, your body will be getting ready and fit and strong for when you come back to school and hopefully in August. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some skills that you need to be working on whilst you're on your school holidays. These are very, very important skills for you to be practicing so that you can show me when you come back that you have good hand eye coordination, that you are able to manipulate the ball, that you are able to use your locomotive skills. So, skill number one, you're going to need a ball. And what you're going to do is very simple to start off with. 
going to sound very easy, but it's going to get harder, especially when I uh, tell you to do some different things. So, the first one we're going to do is around the world. So, I suggest using a bigger ball to start with, and then when you get better throughout the summer, you can use a smaller ball. Try and use a ball that's not too big for your hands, because this will be too hard. Notice, I'm not touching my body with the ball. So a lot of people, when they say to do this, they roll the ball around their body. No, it's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the ball to travel around in one hand. And if you get good, you can start adding some speed. But notice, I'm not throwing the ball around my body. I'm not throwing. I am passing the ball from one hand to the other. If you want to challenge yourself, use a smaller ball. And you can throw to yourself, behind your back, in front of your back. This is going to challenge your hand-eye coordination and your catching and throwing abilities. So that is it to exercise number one, around the world. That's what I want you to try over the summer holidays. The next skill, very simple again, but this time you can go to the real legs. So you're going to do a figure of eight. A figure of eight means you go around the back with one leg, through your legs, and through, and through. So passing again, in and out of your legs, using your hand-eye coordination, using your ball-manipulating skills, controlling the ball. And that is called the figure of eight. Very simple as well. And even if you do these two activities for only 20 seconds a day, you're going to get better at controlling the ball. That you're going to need to use, especially if you want to be better at throwing and catching especially if you want to be good at basketball. Again, if you want to be able to catch any type of ball, these are very important skills. So we've got a round body, we've got a figure of eight. We're now going to do another one, another simple one. And this one is just going to be working on our rotation. Now, notice my hands stay on the ball and go around my head. But the important thing is my rotation of my shoulders. And this is a very important skill to learn, especially when we start to look at the overarm throw and when we use our throwing mechanics. So we need to be able to move our shoulders whilst controlling our ball. Notice my elbows are coming up and down, up and down. Now this is moving my my. I'm showing you that my arms can move and my shoulders have the mobility. Because what happens is when we come to throw, a lot of people just try and use their arm or try and use their hand. We're looking for you to be able to use your whole body. So that means that you need to have flexibility in your shoulder joint. And this is a very good skill, a very good activity to practice that. So you've got a round body, Figure of eight through the legs and around the head, rotational work. Our next one, so our next two skills, we've done a little bit of work on this already, and I've sent a lot of the um, key points out during your presentations earlier on during our home learning experience. But we're going to just revisit them, and I want you to make sure that you're practicing these skills. The next skill is the bounce. All right? All I want you to do is focus this summer on bouncing with two hands, catching with two hands. Notice I'm catching the ball from underneath. I'm using both hands and I'm cupping the ball. I'm cupping the ball and throwing the ball down. Practice this skill and you will get better at hand-eye coordination and manipulating the ball. If you're finding the ball won't bounce back up towards your chest, you need to throw the ball harder. If you're finding it too hard to catch, use a bigger ball. If you find the skill very easy, use a smaller ball 
and you can practice trying packs with one hand. But make sure you're practicing with both hands. So don't just use your right hand or don't just use your left hand. Practice with both. And make sure we're practicing bouncing with two hands. I want to see a direction of hands going down to the ground. Push the ball down. All right, this is a very important skill. Now, if that bounce skill is including a little bit of catch, but now I want you to also practice this skill. And it's so simple to do. And it doesn't take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot of space. All it takes is a bit of concentration and you will get better at your fundamental movement skill of catching. A locomotive skill that is very important for all of your age group to be able to do. So what you can do is catching by yourself, up and down, with your two hands together, in front of your chest, catching inside your bucket. If that's too easy, you can try and bounce the ball off a wall and catch. Again, you can make it harder again by having somebody throw the ball to you and you have to catch the ball that way. Nothing changes with our key points though. So we need to make sure that we're catching the ball with two hands, fingers spread out, open palms, catching in front of my chest. To make it a little bit harder, over the summer, if you get good at catching, what you can do is you can try and start a little drug, juggle. So, a little juggle is like this. Both balls, one hand in each ball, and you are trying to throw the ball up and catch the ball with one hand. All right, again, you get good at this, you can then change. You can throw one across and one like a rainbow. Focus on trying to use your hands to catch both balls. Okay? So don't try and use your chest, that's cheating. Try and just use your hands. Then, when you get good, you'll be able to add some speed, and you'll notice it starts to look a little bit like juggling. Now this is a very complex skill, and I don't expect Marpos 1 students to be able to do this straight off. But if you are very, very talented in your hand-eye coordination, it's going to help you with all sports that we're going to play next year, either in year two or if you're going through to Marpos 2 and going to year three. All right, so there are some of the skills that you can use with a ball over the summer to get yourself into a good position, a good learning position for the next academic year. Right, we're now, I'm going to show you one other game that you can play this summer that is going to get you ready for all sports. All right, and it's a great little fun game you can play with the family. And it's a reacting game, a reaction game. So, one person, you need to play with a family member. And all you're going to do is one person is going to throw a t-shirt in the air above your head and you have to try and catch it. Now it sounds very simple, but we're going to add some elements into it. So your family member is going to throw the t-shirt and they're going to shout out left or right. If they shout out left, you've got to try and grab it with your left hand. If they shout out right, you've got to grab it with your right hand. Another variation is you stand with your back to the person, they shout go, and then they throw, and you've got to try and catch the t-shirt when you turn around. So it looks a bit like this. So if someone throws it, it's like go, and I've got to catch it. It's a great reaction game. And it's a fantastic game to get you ready for those quick, explosive movements. 
to dry out these games over the summer. Make sure you're getting outside as much as possible. Get out of the swimming pools. Swim. Now, EDB has suggested that he's swimming and swimming is okay. Hike as much as you can. Be as active as you can be. And then come back ready to fully take part in your physical education curriculum. Have a lovely summer, everyone. And I will see you, or hopefully in August, for our fantastic CE lesson that I've already planned to get you ready, fit, and healthy. See you all very soon. Thank <laughs> you.